No, this is not the arms race we are looking for. Try it again. I see where this is going. The arms race, an international competition for military supremacy, the fuel of rivalry and violence and warfare, the ultimate catalyst of the First World War. This race of the 19th century developed hostile international rivalries and enemies that would set out to improve their technologies for superiority. Starting from printing papers, car companies working for the military, to all the deadly weapons we know today, technology granted countries with sci-fi-like power to massacre armies in seconds and even to control the minds of thousands of people. These inventions distinguished World War I from all previous wars in history. The advancement of technology made mass society and told the war possible during World War I. Before we talk about weaponry, let's take a step back and talk about wartime economy. The printing press was a valuable asset to every country participating in World War I. While it wasn't a weapon for the battlefield, the press possessed a powerful ability to distribute large amounts of information in a short time frame. This demonstrated the American phrase, the power of the press. For hundreds of years, civilization has been setting ink to paper. It wasn't until the 15th century, however, when printing was mechanized. Johannes Gutenberg, an established German goldsmith and craftsman, invented a press which allowed for an assembly line production process. In other words, it could mass print. Not only was the printing press used for recruitment purposes during the war by creating large, colorful posters promoting the honor of fighting and dying for one's country, but the revolutionary machine created propaganda. Printed in many different forms, such as posters, postcards, and trading cards, propaganda invoked hatred toward the enemy, while also encouraging nationalistic views among a public in full support of war. One of the most iconic works of art, Harry Ryle Hopp's poster, Destroy This Mad Brute, Enlist, portrays Germany as a mad brute striving to destroy America. Behind the barbarian is a hazy outline of a demolished Europe. In one hand, it holds a bloody club engraved with the words, Coulter. In the other, a distraught-looking Lady Liberty. The purpose of this propaganda poster was to shed a new, horrific light on Germany and draft eager men to war. As the printing press and propaganda encouraged civilians to participate in war preparation, countries were soon led to wartime economy, the state of a country where all civilian productions and investments were aided toward war preparation. When the United States first entered the war, there were 200,000 soldiers in line, until May 18th of 1917, when a draft was imposed and up to 4 million were to serve for the war. As for the economy, civilian manufacturing companies such as Rolls-Royce and Ford making war vehicles, the Dayton Wright Company making aircrafts, and even the Singer Sewing Company building guns provided jobs for populations and weapons for armies. It was a win-to-win -win situation. In the years leading up to the outbreak of World War I, many military technologies were developed which would contribute to high casualties during the war itself. Developments within the gun manufacturing industry further aggravated destruction. Muskets were now the far superior rifle, which could be loaded faster and shot with more accuracy. In addition, the Maxim gun, a machine gun firing over 666 rounds per minute, was now commonly used to slaughter multiple men in seconds. But this was far away from being the deadliest weapon in World War I. Chemical weapons. Throughout the American Civil War, civilians and soldiers recommended the use of chlorine gas, projectiles, and poison gas. Years later, in World War I, the rise of technology will allow for the creation of the deadly agent mustard gas. Although the Hague Peace Conference of 1988 limited the development of weapons using poison gases, the negotiations only prohibited the production of delivery systems rather than the gases themselves. Chemical weapons were even more effective than guns, as they haunted soldiers beyond the front lines. Mobility upon land, water, and in the sky was increased during the war. Steel from the Industrial Revolution was used to create many forms of transportation. Trains became an effective and quick way to move troops, while tanks shielded soldiers in a nearly impenetrable shell that was able to wreak havoc on the opposition. In the sky, airplanes were modified to drop bombs, although they were mainly used for reconnaissance and spotting the enemy. Warfare on the water changed dramatically during World War I. Germany, in particular, used submarines and torpedoes to sink ships without being detected. U-boats were also manufactured for swift blows against the enemy. But technological advances weren't just harmful to the people. The medical advancements of World War I contributed heavily to the onset of total war. Vaccinations against major diseases like malaria, tetanus, and typhus, diseases responsible for the death of millions of soldiers, led countries to deploy more troops in hostile environments for terrain advantages. Not only did the technological advancements in medicine affect the structuring and plans of modern war, but it also played a major role in the surge towards mass society. 
countries were now capable of curing illnesses and healing injuries that only a few years prior to the war would have been deadly. Despite this, some say that the technology arms race was what started the world war in the first place, and it is, in a way, true. But as much as it brought destruction, it changed the way the wars function, and it also granted us with our technologies today. And together, we stepped into the modern world of society.